you have to see what is the cytochemical staining that different things give you positivity and uh, you can see the CD markers that will be positive and you know like you can see what are the comments some comments we can see easily I'm going to construct on spot I'm constructing the table right now on spot so what is going to happen so let us see in M0 what are the staining you're going to see you're going to see no staining none of the stains will be positive CD markers only 1333 will be positive in comments it's completely undifferentiated you are not going to get anything out of it only with this I'm going to develop I mean going to understand it's a AML M0 type AML M1 staining will be positive typically what staining Sudan black and myeloperoxidase will be positive and definitely they will be 13 and 33 positive comments again uh, you know like nothing so you don't get much about it and you, even though you have certain uh, cytogenetics maybe Philadelphia chromosome positivity but I mean not that important here so in the M2 uh, staining will be definitely positive in the sense like Sudan black and MPO I can write one more plus also because it can be a little bit even more positive and definitely 13 and 33 strongly positive and very important signature translocation is 8 and 21 and uh, these patients are having high risk of chloromas and leukemia cutis and remember this is the most common type of AML and in a nutshell you have M3 M3 you have extremely strong positivity for uh, Sudan black and uh, myeloperoxidase remember this Sudan black and myeloperoxidase you can add one more thing iron rods also remember because iron rods also goes in parallel with your Sudan black and myeloperoxidase positivity so here is the one where you see maximum Sudan black positivity, maximum MPO positivity and maximum iron rod positivity and definitely they will be 13, 33 positive and the most important signature translocation is 15, 17 PML RARA translocation which you have seen about in detail already and you have something called M4 they will be positive and what stain will be positive here it's a little bit confusing they will be positive for both Sudan black myeloperoxidase and they'll also be positive for non-specific stress because it's a myelomonocytic leukemia AMML and definitely they're not only 1333 positive they will be definitely 11b and 100 and sorry 11b and 14 positive surely so this is what makes sense that this patient is suffering from Myel, I mean acute myelomonocytic leukemia remember the signature translocation I will give you inversion 16 and the maybe translocation of 16 16 both are signature the 1616 typically is associated with the eosinophilic variant as we discussed already then you have m5 m5 remember the staining will be positive but purely for non-specific stress only where it will be definitely negative for myeloperoxidase in Sudan black and remember here you can see a bit of iron rods but here no iron rods definitely no iron rods in m5 and you're not going to see myeloperoxidase or sudan black positivity clear so again they can be see 13 and 33 positive but definitely they will be 11b and 14 positive very strongly and this is what is the key for diagnosing your monocytic leukemia and a signature translocation if you ask me only one important thing is the t911 translocation that is uh, what is the MLL T3 MLL translocation that's why this is important the MLL is really important for oncology that's why I'm telling that and in M6 they will be staining definitely positive but the stain positivity only will be for pass and uh, typically in exam you are going to diagnose by using this 235A and 71 positivity 71 and 235A positivity this is what is going to tell you in exam and there is no characteristic cytogenetic change and in M7 you are going to have variable staining we don't know exactly what staining is but catching mp and sudan black are negative but pass variable nsc variable and they can be positive for plated peroxide that's why i told you variable staining but most of the exam this 41 and 61 positivity is what is going to give you it's a mega karyoblastic differentiation and uh, signature cytogenetic change if they want to ask you an exam they'll ask you t122 probably they can ask you that cytoplasmic bleb picture in exam and they can ask you which is the one and you also have to know this is associated with bone marrow fibrosis because of XC production of PDGF and they yield a dry tap so you have to go for a bone marrow biopsy and uh, this is also associated with something called a Down syndrome very commonly clear so these are very important At the same time I didn't tell you this thing this M4 and M5 has a very high risk of chloromas and leukemia cutis and uh, 
your M3 is going to be associated with the extremely high risk of disseminated intravascular coagulation. So this is a nutshell, very, very important. What are the standard questions in exam you're going to get? So the most common M2, TA21, M2, and you're going to get this T1517, M3, DIC, M3, and chloromass and leukemia acute is very high risk with M4, this inversion 16, T1616 translocation in M4, and you're going to get this past positivity in M6, this bone marrow fibrosis down syndrome in M7. So these are the important points. Even though I constructed a table, I told you the most important points I have shaded over here. It might not look very prominent, you know, but I have written everything. You can, I mean, retrack it and you can rewind and see once again if you want. But be very, very careful about this. The whatever nutshell I have told, this is really, really important. Whatever I told you, for exam. At the end of the exam, only you study this, you get to answer as much as possible. Clear? Thank you.